All right, you guys, this is Ross, the fig boss. We finally have some fig trees for sale. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking me for months, for weeks, for years. I remember uh, last year we had plans to sell a lot of these trees and we just couldn't because the post office was so slow and behind because of the pandemic. Well, we finally have them here. So that's part of what this video is gonna be about is an announcement video. Uh, we're listing them all on Figbid, by the way. So if anyone's interested, you can go down and the link, there's a link in the description of this video that will send you to all the listings I have available. I have about six trees, I think, listed right now that are ending for auction tonight around nine o'clock Eastern. So if you're interested, either put in a price, put in a, um, a bid now for the auction or wait until the last minute and try to get the best price possible. It's up to you. Um, in this video, we're gonna talk about a lot of the common questions I get because I inevitably get really the same questions every single year. If I ever sell cuttings, I ever sell trees, I always get bombarded by the same things, the same questions. So we're making this video to answer all those questions. So if you have a question right now, you're thinking to yourself, Ross, I got a question. I need to know what the answer to the question is. Um, please listen to this video very carefully. There is a very good chance that I am gonna answer your question in this video at some point. Um, and watch it all the way to the end. The end is actually where all the money's at because we're gonna talk about what you guys should be doing when you receive these trees in the mail from me or let's say somebody else. I've shipped many trees uh, over the years, whether that was to friends, uh, people I was trading with, whether that was people I was selling to, and I've also received a lot of trees. You know, a lot of these trees I've at some point received in the mail, right? Whether that was from, again, friends, people I've purchased from, many different wide variety of nurseries, bare-rooted trees, potted trees, cuttings, seeds, everything. So there's no real reason that you should be afraid of this whole process. It's quite normal at this point um, to send and receive trees in the mail, believe it or not, assuming you take the right steps. So there's steps on my end that I have to fulfill. It goes to the post office. At that point, it's in their hands. When you receive the tree, now it's in your hands. And there's a lot of steps that you should take to ensure that you have success going forward with your fig tree. So that's really critical. We'll get to that at the end. The, really the most common question I'm gonna get, probably after putting up just the thumbnail of this video, people may not even watch this, this video, but they're gonna always inevitably ask, Ross, do you have X variety? Do you have a Black Madeira? Do you have a Smith? Do you have an Italian 258? Do you have any Col de Doms? Do you have Verdino del Nord? Do you have X, Y, and Z? The answer is, I don't know. I don't have a list. I haven't put together a list. I don't know exactly when I'm gonna sell and exactly when I'm gonna sell it and even when it's gonna be available. Whatever I have available, so whatever's really healthy and I think is the right size to be shipped, I will ship it. If I don't think it's the right size just yet, it's not available, it's not ready. So I'm gonna wait until I think these, these trees are appropriately sized. I, I truly believe that there's a really perfect size for these trees so that you guys are the, the happiest possible. What you don't want is a tree that's really small and really weak, right? Like this guy here, it just doesn't have the root system that it needs just yet. So that if, let's say something did happen in the mail or let's say you guys did receive this tree, if I sent you the right size tree with a better root system, it's gonna have a better chance of surviving and, and not only surviving, but doing well for you guys. So I'd rather send you guys larger trees that are not small, that have a larger root system, and that just unfortunately takes some time. So as the season goes on, um, you know, whether it's like the spring now, we're finally almost done in the spring, we're gonna sell a lot of trees throughout the summer and throughout the fall, and then in the, like, the very end of the fall, or I should say parts of the fall, we're gonna have actually bare-rooted trees, these larger trees you see behind me, that we're gonna take, whether it's an in-ground tree, take off all the soil, a potted tree, take off all the soil, wrap those in newspaper, wet newspaper, cover it with a plastic bag, and send them in a pretty large box, and you guys can have the chance of, you know, buying a, a really uh, large tree that should put out a lot of fruit for you guys. So there's different stages and different times that all these trees are gonna be sold, and I can't necessarily say 
you know, I have this variety exactly now. It's just a lot easier for me if you guys are just a little patient um, and whenever they're available, a particular variety, that's when they're gonna be sold. So I just really hope that you guys got that message and can please abide by um, you know, my request of just being a little bit patient. So there's also, by the way, um, a downside. Some of these trees can be too big, and I've seen that actually from sellers, is that they're just in these pots for too long. They become too root bound, the roots inevitably get tangled up and the, the tree, I don't think does very well long-term. Um, you know, it's nice to have a really good tree that you receive in the mail that has really good roots, especially if they're coming out of the bottom, that's a great sign that the tree is root bound. But if it's in here for too long, I think the tree inevitably can choke itself out if you're not taking the right steps uh, to kind of untangle and really tease the roots. Um, I don't recommend you do that, by the way, when you receive my trees. They're not at the state where they're so root-bound that there's a problem. Um, if you had a tree that, that was so root-bound that there is a problem, then that would be obviously a great strategy to, to help get those roots in the right places uh, so that you have a better you know, uh, health of your tree over a longer period of time. So. Uh, that's a common one of just requesting, you know, what variety do I have uh, available? Again, please, please abide by my wishes. Uh, in terms of where you can buy them and how you can buy them, it's all done on Figbit. So that's another common question. There's a link down in the description of this video that you guys can see at any time on any of my videos. Maybe bookmark it. You guys can also go to my blog, figboss.com. There's a link to my store there that actually will send you to all the listings I have available. So if you're ever curious, let's say, what varieties or what trees I'm selling, there it is. That's the page where everything is listed. So again, whatever I have available will be there and there's no custom orders. I, I really do apologize for that. People ask me all the time behind the scenes, can I have a particular variety? Do you have this available, blah, 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 blah. And I just feel bad because there's a lot of demand. And rather than having a first come, first serve option, which I do actually, at some point, I always offer buy it now prices at some point on Figbit. But uh, I'd rather let you guys have a fair shot at this by offering them, them up as auction. Whoever is willing to pay the price that they think it's worth, that's the fairest price. That's how a free market system works. So. Some people take offense to auctions, think they're just greedy, think the overall price of these fig trees is generally very high. It is generally very high, but that's in my opinion, just based off the amount of demand that I, I get on a daily or weekly basis, I think that's really the best way to handle this so that nobody's left out. Everyone has the option and the ability to win one of these trees uh, if they really want it. So. We're gonna probably at some point, we will offer some buy it now prices for anyone that's totally against auctions and totally doesn't have time. But at the end of the day, you know, even if it's an auction, you can put in whatever your maximum bid is. You don't have to wait till the very end. As I said, the, the listings for these trees that I'm selling today that are gonna to end tonight, they end at nine o'clock roughly Eastern PM. So if you wait to the last minute, you could potentially get the best price. You might have the, better, the best chance of winning. But if you just put in your, your, you know, whatever it is that you're willing to pay, whatever you think is fair right now, or let's say earlier in the auction's life cycle, then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. And you can uh, win the tree if indeed you may not even get to your price. That's the best part. You put in your max price, let's say you say you think it's worth $70, maybe the auction only goes to 50 and you win it for 50. So you have the option, I think people don't understand this, is that you could actually get a lower price than if I set the price. I may set the price at $70 and then you'll have to pay $70, which would might be easier for you in a sense, but you know, you you could potentially save yourself money by using these auctions. It's really that simple. Um, so, all right, so that's a big one there. I think a lot of people get 
hung up on. Um, if you've never used Figbit before, it's really easy. You just create an account like any other website. Um, and then you have to connect your PayPal account to your account. And that's where I'm, that's how I'm receiving payment for these trees. In terms of, uh, you know, how they're gonna be shipped, again, they're all gonna be sent at least in the short term in these one gallon size tree pots. They're four inches by four inches by nine inches. So they're quite long. And that really helps, I think, build a, a nice root system for any tree. So I root a lot of cuttings in here. I put air layers in these. Um, I think they're great for trees in general. Excuse me. And they're, they're small enough and they're slender enough to fit very specific boxes that make it actually cheaper to ship. The pots are not that expensive. Um, and they're technically, I think, when you get the tree, way better off um, for you guys when you plant them. Whether you plant them in a container, whether you plant them in the ground, they just get so much better established this way because the roots are forced to grow downwards to form a root system that's longer rather than wider. And the fig tree loves to grow its roots outwards rather than down. So if you can, in its early life, force it to go down a bit, you could potentially get a better established tree, I think a little bit quicker than if you grew it in a, uh, a shorter pot. So that's my personal preference, why I like these pots. They're gonna be sent priority mail. Um, some common concerns I get, priority mail is usually two to five days. If you live closer to the Philadelphia area where I'm at, it's gonna obviously arrive quicker. Uh, if you live on the West Coast, it could take five days. And of course, if you're in California, this is probably the only real situation that this, this can occur. But depending on where you're at in California, it's off, it, it can often happen, depending on your location, that your trees might be held up and inspected. Um, they love to actually sniff out plants that are sent through the mail and inspect the plants just in case there is, let's say, a pest that could potentially affect one of the crops in California that they're trying to protect. So it's understandable. Um, that they're going through that, I totally get it. Uh, but in that event that they are in fact inspected, instead of arriving, let's say by Friday, if I'm sending them out Monday, five days later, they could arrive by let's say Thursday or Friday, they might get inspected and over the weekend, um, they'll probably be held and then you might receive your tree the following week on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, so, you know, if that event actually does occur, you know, bear with me, work with me here. It's just a part of, unfortunately, living in California. I mean, I have, I have no other, uh, I have no control over that, unfortunately. And um, maybe if I lived in California and I was shipping to California, it might be a little different, but I think even then it's not that different. So please, uh, you know, if that's the case, bear with me and just know that that is the case. I, I'm gonna send them I have probably, I've roughly three or four different boxes that I like to use, uh, all sent, again, priority mail. I use the small mailing tube, priority mail that the post office offers. I use a box that's four by four by 18, I think it is. I use a box that's uh, six by six by 36. And I use a really big box for these bare rooted trees that's like eight by eight by 36 or, or 48 or something like that. So uh, yeah, it depends on, by the way, how many trees that you guys are, are gonna purchase. If you buy more than one tree at a time, I can often send them together. Um, so if you want me to combine shipping with uh, you know multiple trees in the same box, I can definitely do that. Uh, and that way you can save yourself a little bit on shipping. If you want me to combine shipping, by the way, it automatically gets combined. Um, combined, I'm sorry, on, on Figbit. So there's a, there's a way that I have already pre-programmed it to already combine the shipping for you. That's a, another common question I get. Um, yeah, so, and the cost is already built in. There's an additional cost of sending more trees together, uh, but it's cheaper in the long run. It'll save you about $10 if you buy two trees. I can send two trees together in one box uh, of this size, usually. So we'll see. There may be some special uh, circumstances. So then um, those are, I think, really the most common questions about, you know, 
that's what you're gonna receive, that's what I have available. I'm only trying to sell you guys the healthiest and strongest trees I have. If they're really struggling with fig mosaic virus, that's another common one. I usually don't sell them. If they're not healthy altogether, I usually wait and I do some rejuvenation pruning. As some of these trees I have, I could have sold them very easily, but I decided to cut them back, to rejuvenation prune them to make them a lot healthier for the future. Um, so that's my particular recommendation um, with that is that you don't really have to worry too much about the, the fig mosaic virus. It's present in all the trees. It's really a non-issue assuming the tree is healthy, assuming you're giving it the right amount of nutrients. Um, you shouldn't have any problems, really. If you have a good soil, good soil moisture, good pH in your soil, and then of course the nutrients, there's nothing to worry about. Um, and whatever trees that have it really badly, I've, I've already gone ahead and selected, pre-selected them to not sell them until they are healthy. Um, and I've talked a lot about that rejuvenation pruning these really small trees just a couple weeks ago or a month or two ago on the YouTube channel. Uh, so what are some of the things now that you have got the trees in the mail or a plant in the mail? What are some of the things you guys should do? Well, if you get one of these in the mail, it's always a really great recommendation, no matter where it's from, to put it in less light. Um, by the way, the box that it comes in, when you take it out of the box, open the box from the heavy side. So wherever the bottom of this pot is, open it up there and slide the pot out. Don't pull on the top, that could damage the plant. So be careful and really when you're handling this, only handle the pot, don't handle the, the actual stem or the branches of the tree. Pull it out from the bottom, that's really critical. Um, but when you get the tree and it's out of the box and hopefully it's not sitting in sunlight for too long, I'm sending you guys tracking by the way, that automatically gets sent to your PayPal to your email. So if your email, whatever the, the email account that you use in your PayPal account, if you check that email, you will get the tracking information automatically. I don't have to send it to you. You know when the tree is gonna arrive. So if for whatever reason there's a problem, you're not home, you can't actually get your tree, ask a neighbor, hopefully you have some precautions set up so that the tree, the box, isn't sitting in the sun you don't want to cook your tree. They can get very hot in those boxes if they're in direct sunlight for too long, especially you guys in like 90 to 100 degree weather. It's not, it's not good. So get it out of the box quickly and put it in some shade. Um, you can put it obviously in an area like this, but if you have some plastic or a shade cloth that can cover it and create an environment that's less light, that's good. If you have an environment, let's say underneath a tree, that's quite shady, that's good as well. Just somewhere that doesn't get a whole lot of direct sunlight for the first couple days. Let it slowly acclimate to your environment. I'd also recommend, because I'm in a very humid place, guys, it rained quite a bit here recently. A lot of the new leaves on these trees are adjusted to higher humidity conditions. So if I have an average of, let's say, 60% humidity here, and you live in the desert, where you have almost no humidity, well, these trees are not gonna be adjusted to that level of humidity. So when you take it out of that box, you really need to get it in the, in the shade, maybe in a more humid environment that you can put it in, and potentially you may even wanna take your hose and give it a few squirts with the hose, or maybe not a hose, but a bottle of water or something, so that you can water these trees down and give them a little bit more humidity in the meantime, while they slowly start to adjust um, to that average humidity that you guys have. That's a really key critical point that people don't realize. You need to adjust them not only to the temperatures that you guys have, the humidity that you guys have, the difference, by the way, between my location and your location, and the sunlight. So if you put it in the shade, you guys might have a stronger sunlight than I do. My patio only gets about eight hours of light. I live quite far north. If I sent this to somebody in the south who got 14 hours of light or something crazy, maybe 12 hours, I don't even know if you guys get 14 hour days down there. 
But if you had 12 hours of light and it was down in Florida where the sun is very intense compared to here, there's going to be a problem. You're going to get some sunburn. You're not going to be happy. Your tree's not going to look that great. It's going to take a while for your tree to rebound. So we don't want that. We want this process to be very seamless. After a few days, you get it acclimated to the sun, you get it acclimated to the heat, you get it acclimated to the humidity, you can take it out of its pot and you can plant it. Whether that's in a container, whether that's in the ground, do not disturb the roots. When you take these trees out of their pot, you turn it upside down like so, and you pull the pot away from the tree. You do not tug on the stem. That will cause damage to the roots and the fig tree is very particular with root damage. So please, uh, they suffer very easily from root rot. Uh, and let me tell you, especially young trees like this, you don't wanna damage the roots. It really is just that simple. You're gonna be way better off if you don't damage the roots and there's a better acclimation process and transition process from my yard to your yard. So that is roughly it here, guys, I think. Those are the big keys, the big lessons. Um, again, I don't really know exactly what I'm going to have for sale, but I do appreciate everybody that's interested and you know wants to eventually buy a tree. I wish I could have them at better times. I wish I could have a, you know a better system for you guys, whatever it is. But this is really the best way that I know how to do it, and uh, I appreciate you guys checking out the video, and uh, hopefully not asking me too many questions. So uh, we'll see you soon, all right? Um, if you've received a tree from me, by the way, in the mail and it's done well for you or, or not, let me know down in the comments. Um, if you have questions, by the way, regarding anything along, along the lines of these trees, you know, I'm gonna re probably refer to you to this video, but don't be afraid to ask. I know I've said, don't bug me with questions, but, um, you know, you may have some questions that are not covered in this or, uh, you know, I want to make sure that you guys are have all the information that you need. Maybe you have a particular question on the variety itself and I'd be happy to answer that. So, well, I thank you guys and we'll see you soon. All right. Take care.